All right, this is the workshop, the early years, homeschooling your preschooler. How many of you have preschoolers? Wow, that's great. All right, it's interesting. I read a book uh, about a year or so ago that was quite interesting to me. In it, the author, who was a doctor and worked, he was a pediatrician, worked with young kids. He went across the sea to work in a refugee camp for a while in a war-torn country. And as he worked with the kids there, he noticed a lot of post-traumatic stress symptoms in those kids. Logically, he would see it there. But when his time was up in the refugee camp, he came back to the States, took up his practice here again. And in a little while, he started noticing some of these same symptoms in the kids here in the States like they were under so much stress and trauma. And he was trying to figure out why they were showing these symptoms. So he started asking questions and trying to figure this out. And he came to this conclusion that these children, a lot of them were preschoolers, had all of this stress in their life because of three things. Basically, they had too much stuff. They had too much information coming at them and they had too busy of a schedule. And those three things were causing all this stress he was seeing. I thought, well, that's interesting, but, you know, that was in New York. If any of you are from New York, I apologize. <laughs> but that was in New York. It's probably not that stressful here where I live. Then, the next day, I got on Facebook and read a post from a friend of mine. He has four kids. The oldest at the time was, I think, about eight years old, so most of the kids were in the preschool range. And here's what he posted. I gave my wife the afternoon off from kids. So to recap my day, four kids in my charge, two swim lessons, one taekwondo lesson, dinner out, 30 minutes of reading for the big kids, softball practice, and a trip to the grocery store. I thought, wow. Maybe it's not isolated just up north. Maybe it is widespread. There's a quote on your handouts that I find very interesting. It says, in this time of extraordinary pressure, educational and social. Now, let me stop there for just a moment. Do any of you feel extraordinary pressure educationally with your preschoolers? What kind of pressure are you feeling and from whom? Let's not name names, all right? But what, describe that to me. What's the pressure? To read. To read, ah. Anything else? Always sitting still and quiet. <laughs> Doing very specific task oriented things. Yeah, the boys sitting here in their chair and not moving anything but their hand as they write. Yeah, like that's going to happen. To have the best kid in the class. The best kid in the class. Mm, that is a lot of pressure. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Number one in the class. I think a lot of moms feel like they need their kids need to have just the right kind of social experiences, just the right kind of a wide exposure to lots of activities um, and things. They feel like, oh, if I don't do this now, then we're going to be behind or they're going to be behind the curve. Yes, that's the social pressure, exactly, that she was talking about. You're feeling all this pressure educationally and socially. What's interesting to me is that this quote is by Charlotte Mason. She lived 100 years ago. And if they felt extraordinary pressure, educationally and socially, with their young ones 100 years ago, that must have increased exponentially for us today. So let's see what she recommends. In this time of extraordinary pressure, educational and social, perhaps a mother's first duty to her children is to secure for them a quiet, growing time. Doesn't that sound inviting? A quiet growing time. What we want to talk about in this session is what does that look like? If we want to give our children a quiet growing time, do we just plop them on the floor of the living room and say, grow? <laughs> yeah. What does it look like? Let's, let's talk about that today. Charlotte basically outlined that there are two duties of parents. 
And this applies to parents of all ages of children, but especially to parents of preschoolers. And the two duties are here in your notes. First is to form right habits of thinking and behaving. The preschool years are prime opportunity to instill good habits in your children's lives. The second duty of parents is to nourish that child's mind with good, loving, and noble ideas. So let's talk about ways we can do those two duties with our preschoolers during the first six years of their lives. Charlotte did not start formal lessons until the child was six years old. So you have all of those years for this wonderful, quiet, growing time, laying the foundation, letting them send down deep roots that will flourish later.